Lola, in this video, we're gonna show everyone how to make money by doing food delivery in Korea. Eugene's gonna be doing delivery by foot. I'm gonna be doing delivery by bike. So first of all, it's possible to do delivery by bike, foot, motorbike, car, or like any of those new electric things like scooters or kickboards or whatever. In Seoul, I don't think it's a good idea to do delivery by car because there's just not enough space. In this video, we'll be comparing Paymin Connect and Coupang Eats. Paymin Connect is the most popular delivery app in Korea so far, but Coupang Eats is also gaining a lot of popularity. One important thing to note is foreigners can't use Coupang Eats. I tried to register and it's impossible. They just told me that uh, foreigners aren't allowed to use the service. So this might change at some point in the future, but we'll just have to wait until then. There are also two other really popular delivery apps called Yogio and Vroom, but we're not signed up for them. In this, we'll just be able to compare the two because those are the only two that we have access to right now. We'll just let you know how it is as we do it because that'll be more fun than just uh, watching us walk and talk like this. So let's get started. It was our original goal to compare Coupon Eats and Payment Connect, but it turns out that there aren't many walking orders with Coupon Eats as we didn't receive a single one for over an hour in our neighborhood. It's possible that other neighborhoods would receive more, but since this video is targeted more towards non-Koreans, we figured we'd compare what it's like to do walking deliveries versus biking deliveries with Payment Connect since that's an app that we can actually use. Got a delivery. <laughs> All right, so this is the first delivery since coming to Mapo, and you just stressed out already. <laughs> the first place was a Japanese ramen food delivery service that runs out of a basement. It was really hard to find, so it's important to know that not every place is a regular restaurant, and it might take some extra time to find it. Also, we learned quickly that this handbag style delivery bag was too small for some deliveries. Deliveries are mostly paid in advance, but in this case, it was a company charging lunch to the company card. Here, you have to input the card information onto the app twice, just so you don't make a mistake. There is also a Bluetooth card reader you can buy for about 59,000 won. Payment Connect also allows you to see all the information such as the restaurant location, the delivery location, payment type, and payment amount before you even accept a delivery. You get one minute to either accept or deny the delivery too. The second delivery was also done by card, but at a private residence. We are starting to worry that most deliveries would be paid by card in person. We learned very quickly that it's a good idea to bring water and some snacks while doing delivery by foot, as it seems every delivery is about one kilometer of walking total, which adds up over time. We also learned that a backpack style delivery bag is a lot easier to use than a handbag style bag. The problem with some uh, apartment complexes in Korea, they're so complex, there's so many different buildings and stuff inside, and everyone's a little bit different, so sometimes it takes you a while to find the entrance. Oh, you go on, yeah? Let's stop for a second. Here we have the entrance of building 102 with a 1 and a 3 on both sides. In 99% of the cases, this means that the house number either ends with a 1 or a 3. This is really important to know. However, in this specific instance, it was the entrance for units 1, 2, 3. This might not seem important, but trust me, in every other apartment complex I've ever been to, 
You wouldn't be able to find the entrance of an apartment ending with two from this entrance and there would be a separate entrance that you have to find instead. We circled the whole building and there were no other entrances, so we realized that this apartment complex works differently, and there was just one entrance for all units. If you aren't confused right now, I'm very impressed. Luckily now we know this every time we have to deliver to this specific apartment complex. Our next delivery we had to come right back here, so we could use this info right away. When you drop off the food at a place, there is a little questionnaire that asks things like, did the customer have any special requests? Did you complete the delivery properly? And you have to take a picture of the delivery with the door number in sight just as evidence in case there are problems later on. I didn't know this the first time, so I panicked from not being able to take my picture properly. Luckily, Eugene was there to film my first delivery fail and keep me out of trouble. All the steps that you start with, you just have to press one button. Like, yeah, I arrived at the store. Yeah, I picked up the food. And then when you drop off the order, it asks you a full questionnaire. And I wasn't ready for that at all. I thought you just press one button. So I just dropped it off, knocked, pressed the button and it just failed, so I uh, started panicking and uh, you didn't have to help me kind of figure out that situation. Now let's talk about how much you can make. In our experience, it seems like it can be as little as 3,000 won and as much as about 7,000 won for walking and up to 10,000 won for biking because you have to travel longer distances. The best time to do deliveries is dinner time during the weekends, so that would be between about 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Anybody can easily complete two deliveries in an hour and if you are fast, then up to three. So if you take your time, you can make from six to 14,000 won per hour walking and 8 to 20,000 won per hour biking. Nice long hill to go up here now. Kind of a typhoon too. Definitely not the type deliver you want to do. Here you can see I'm delivering to a really old apartment complex with no lights. Although the money is better at nighttime and Korea is a really safe country, the daytime is probably best for those that are uncomfortable in these types of environments. Luckily, these kind of places are pretty rare in Korea. That place is pretty sketchy. I'm hoping that it's uh, the right one because uh, it was kind of dark and hard to see. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of biking and walking. 도보 배달의 장점은 이동 반경이 그리 넓지 않아서 집 근처에서 일할 수 있어 마음이 편해요. 새로운 동네를 걸어서 구석구석 구경할 수 있다는 점도 정말 좋아요. 사람들의 사는 모습을 다양하게 볼수 있거든요. 가끔 길에서 마주치는 라이더분들이 도보 배달을 하는 저를 응원해 주실 때가 있어요. 그럼 제 마음도 따뜻해지고 더 성실하게 살아야겠다는 마음도 들더라고요. When it comes to bike deliveries, the biggest advantages are that you can make a little bit more money and when the road is flat, they take less effort than walking. The disadvantages being that it's more dangerous biking on the streets of Seoul than it is walking and you have to go longer distances. On my first night of deliveries, every delivery I did had me going away from our house, so I had to backtrack at the end of the night. So uh, we might call it pretty soon because the weather got pretty crazy, but uh, it's a lot more intense at night in the rain and stuff than it is in the day because uh, there's a lot more traffic and uh, people walking around and stuff like that. But also the hills are pretty extreme. A lot of hills that I didn't know about actually exist around here. Pretty tiring because we walked around a lot today already. The next day, I did three more deliveries at lunchtime and made about 13,000 won in one hour. But wow, it was tiring. It seems like people who live in buildings without elevators or on top of a mountain really like to order delivery. I probably would too in that scenario. I gotta buy a kickboard. 
If you enjoyed the video, we'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing if you want to watch more similar videos in the future. Doing those two things supports us a lot and helps us reach our dream of making a living off of doing what we love to do. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe out there.